take you to Parliament where uh, the vetting committee is uh, vetting uh, Katie Hammond as the new minister designate for trade and industry. Let's take you there now. Yes, honourable members, that's our nominee. Yes, me. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. First, uh, Senior Prefect, congratulations. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Don't forget I was Deputy Trade Minister. Not just that. When we were in school, I used to listen to his commentary a lot. You know, so <laughs> when I came here, I wanted to know if it is him. And uh, he said it's him. Neil and Excellent. Best commentary I ever had. He and Joe Latte. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, first, what is your view on the efforts of this government on import substitution? I've, I've, got, I've got some strong personal views of my, 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 my own, uh, which, which may appear to coincide with, with that of, uh, of, the, of the government. Um, when we hit the snag, I went around speaking to whoever wanted to hear me out. Why is it that everything that you can think about is very important in this country, which has such a terrible effect on our, uh, our currency, our foreign exchange reserves? So um, it's not about time that um, we took a, a serious look um, uh, at this particular issue. Then. Uh, when my nomination came up and I had to do a little bit more research, um, it became apparent that cabinet actually is taking up the issue. I, I have been told that uh, in October last year, a committee was um, put together by um, uh, cabinet to specifically deal with this matter. And uh, uh, colleagues, uh, w w when I looked at some of the issues that had been raised, I actually, this is speaking for myself, I was scandalized. Um, um, I brought two documents. One is that one. It, it's been decided at that level that we should be looking at about 50 specific areas where it's probably important to look at issues of import substitution. And what I found scandalizing is what appeared at uh, paragraph four of the item that they are listed. You know what we import into Ghana? We import guts, we import bladders, and we import stomachs of animals to Ghana to complement, I think, our food, whatever. And that alone totaled, a uh, year that's in the question, about 164,570,000 plus some hundreds of dollars. I, I thought this is a little bit of a scandal. Um, so, but it's on the list. Uh, it's a committee is put together, a decision has been made that uh, we should, as a, as a country, seriously um, consider as much as possible um, uh, to uh, uh, institute uh, uh, some policy to ensure that uh, we have some substitution um, for, for, for um, some of these items. It's not only this. This is what I found scandalizing. But there are other things on the list. You're looking at rice, you're looking at uh, beverages, you're looking at... I mean, rice alone, uh, I also happen to have found out that we were smuggling rice into the, uh, into the country uh, without <laughs> disclosing. Because you look at how much is produced locally, you look at how much we consume, and then you do the subtraction. There's a gap of close to about 500, 600 um, uh, metric tons, which has been consumed but not accounted for through the system. So there is that, and then uh, <clears throat> second-hand vehicles, second-hand clothing, and uh, quite a lot uh, that uh, government feels that... Uh, um, uh, to ensure some sanity in the system um, should be looked at. So I have a very, um, a very clear views in my, my own mind um, what, should be, what should be done, uh, obviously encouraged by what I've read in the, in the government uh, papers. Um, your strong view will take me to one area that is of much concern to me because I'm one of the people who patronize that the textile industry in Ghana. 
has suffered this unbridled importation of foreign uh, substitutes. Japan, Akosomo, GTP, all these factories are virtually being suffocated out of the market. As a minister, what will be your determined approach towards giving life to these industries and making sure that the undue competition this phase from imported substitutes is minimized? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, it's a, it's a sorry state of affairs, and uh, really not what I am personally determined to do. As I said, I'm encouraged um, that I'm in the exceptionally good company in the shape of what I've read here. Cabinet is already taking clear decisions on some of these matters. Um, Grafon almost collapsed. Uh, Akonsumo one um, almost collapsed. Um, Government is very clear uh, what is to be done. Why all these import substitutions, uh, particularly on the textile front that you just indicated, when um, um, we, we, keep, we keep literally importing everything from China, some of them not uh, terribly high quality, uh, but we, we import all the same. So um, uh, I see that um, uh, the committee has been taxed to ensure that um, Whatever is uh, uh, immediately available, <clears throat> financially plausible and reasonable um, should be done by those responsible. And for those responsible, I think I'm looking at a committee um, superintended over by a Minister of uh, um, Trade um, to ensure that these companies are brought back to life. Mr. Chairman, um, are, you, are you following up? Are you, you are following up? You are following up? Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I will plead that uh, the Honorable Nominee let us have uh, the document so that we also peruse it to see what it looks like. But then further to that, one of the creative mechanisms to facilitate trade in Africa and West Africa has been the Af uh, Africa trade, uh, common trade area. But Serious barriers to movement of goods and persons in the West African community area is so pronounced. Between Ghana and, let's say, our big brother Nigeria, you can count on 167 checkpoints and barriers. What will you do in the community of your colleagues from the West African minister's angle to reduce the barriers within our corridor to trade and the movement of persons. So, Mr. Chairman, if I understand, is it the ECOWAS one or the African Continental Free Trade Agreement? I'm talking about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, but then the barriers within the West African corridor being, a, 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 let me say, a hurdle. Yeah. and a stumbling block to achieving the yeah. ultimate goals of the continental free trade area. Yeah, sure. Well, well it's, exactly, it's exactly the case. Uh, we've had ECOWAS since about, what, 1974, um, 74, 75, uh, various protocols when we were at the university, well, all these uh, all the protocols. I guess there are, there are genuine issues. Well, it's not the case that there's no trade at all. I mean, there has been some, uh, some trading activities um, going on among uh, the respective countries. But as, as you rightly indicate, the, the barriers are, are, are quite uh, fundamental. And there's again that backdrop that uh, the African the free trade content, uh, African content of free trade uh, uh, thing uh, also can be viewed um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the metrics. Um, it, it, it would definitely have to be discussed. Uh, of course, it starts with a presidential level, um, the heads of government level, and then um, thereafter, um, uh, ministerial level um, uh, decision, decisions, hard decisions would have to be made. I mean, we do recall, for example, recently in our own country, Ghana, here, the problems that uh, Nigerian traders have had uh, uh, with a the system. Uh, there have been protocols, uh, except that I think some countries don't particularly 
abide by the protocols. Others, I think, are difficult to put in place. But there are difficulties. I think we would cross a bridge when uh, we, we come to them. But as I said, um, it, it's, it's, it's a notorious fact that uh, there are difficulties in the system. Mr. Chairman, my last. Me, you have. You have had three already. Also wondering, how many questions do you want Thank to ask? You, you have had three last. already. I my last, Mr. Chairman. Please. Let me, let me not leader. start. I'm taking one for my leader. No, he will give it to you when he's... But please, let me not start a precedent which I cannot manage. Yes. Yes. Any, any person from, from the majority side? No question. All right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Honorable Katie Hammond. Um, I'm sure as a member of the House, you are conversant with the annual reports to Parliament of the staff of the Presidential Office. I'm sure you are conversant with the annual report because all of us parliamentarians are given a copy of yeah, but the that, that, report. That, that does not necessarily make you conversant with it. You may have a copy, but you know what I mean. Well, the assumption is that if you are as intelligent as you claim, you will be conversant uh, Mr. with... Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, you'll can, be you, conversant can with, uh, you have a discussion with your honorable, colleague over honorable, there? Yeah. That, that, is, that is unparliamentary. Well, but, but Mr. That. Chairman... Mr. Chairman, the nominee must realize that he's before a serious committee. You can do whatever you do with us outside the sitting of the committee. When you come before the committee and you're on national television and everybody is viewing, you must take us serious. I'm asking a question. Let me finish asking the question. And if you have an answer, you can give your answer. If you tell the whole country that you've not been paying attention to the papers, that have been given to you. It's up to you. Mr. 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 Chairman, we, 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 we are working on your nomination, and you are interjecting honorable, and, and directing honorable everybody. Member, that's, it's, it's me. I'm supposed to regulate the meeting. So if I'm failing, I'll take responsibility. Please proceed with your question. Yes, the question I, I have, the question I have, I, I, I wanted to uh, repeat what Honorable Ayariga said. Um, at a time of our country where people are in real difficulty making ends meet, I'm of, I'm of the view that the nominee is very affable, and we all know. But when you are about to take, at least as the president wished, a position as a trade minister, you need to put up a posture that is more serious than being friendly to us. I, 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 I thought, I thought, please, honorable, please, please, I think it's my fault. I should not be allowing this. All right. Now, please continue with your question. I want us to be as strict as possible, and I'm going to apply the rules very strictly. Yeah. Yes, please. So, honorable nominee, the report to parliament of the presidential staffers for 2021 indicated that there was a total of 337 political appointees. 337 political appointees at the office of the president. 300 and 37 political appointees. That is contained in the report that came to Parliament for 2021. I want to find out from you, what work will 337 people be doing at the office of the President? Do you have any idea what work they are doing? Honorable, please. Honorable members. We are guided by our standing orders. If it's a report that is before you, their work and things will be 
in the report. So for things that are already published are not admissible questions. Please ask another question. Well, you have to show me specifically which provision of our standing orders bar me from, answer, from asking this question. Can we ask another question, please? Chairman, you, no, you have to show no me that. In you have to show me a provision in our standing orders that says that I cannot Chair, ask Chairman. him that question. Honorable members, this is not a new business we're doing. Please, don't worry. I, I expect that he knows. Is that he knows the rules. He knows what regards questions. So I should not be pointing it out to him, just to the public. But please, I've ruled that you should ask another question, please. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying that I don't know. And I'm not embarrassed to say I don't know. So because I don't know, I'm saying that point to the specific provisions that says that when there's a nominee before this committee, I cannot ask him about the workings of the office of the president. I expect a specific provision that says so. Um, uh, Yawa am appointed to 67 1H. A question shall not be asked, the answer to which is readily available in official publications. Mr. Speaker, I refer to that official publication. The, 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 the report, you have it. Everybody has it. Nobody has disputed the fact. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the report just mentions people and then it mentions an office. So for instance, you have presidential staffer, about 44 people. You have presidential advisor on the economy, presidential advisor on health, presidential advisor on media, presidential advisor on SG, S, SDGs. You have uh, several presidential staff, it just says presidential staffer. Then you have mention of senior presidential aide. Then you have presidential aide. Then you have presidential physician that I can, I can tell is, is a medical doctor. Then you have special aid to the chief of staff, special aid to the chief of staff, special aid to minister for fisheries and aquaculture development, special assistant to deputy chief of staff, special assistant to the senior presidential advisor, special assistant to the minister for environment, science, technology, and innovation, special advisor to the minister for Honorable. interior, Special advisor to the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. You said that Mr. Speaker, we all have copies of the report. Yes. Yes. So, so I shouldn't repeat them. Not necessary. Okay. We have copies. Okay. Can so, we ask so, your question? Yes. So why will, why will special advisor for ministers of state be sitting at the office of the president? Honorable, are you aware? Why they sit at the office of president? M Mr. Chairman, As please. That what will allow is whether he's aware of that or not. M Mr. Chairman, I'm not aware. Um, but b before I, I, I do, let me let me put a matter in perspective. Mr. Chairman, I'm aware that we're on live television. I'm not sure I'm trivializing this occasion. Number two, the honourable member from Boko has been a good friend all along. We've always known in the house that he is have a trade. I've never doubted his competence. If he now says that I claim I am brilliant. Honorable, please, can I leave that, that there? We will, we, will, we, will, we will do I, I that. I thought I should put that into proper perspective. Thank you very much. Please, leave it there. Can I ask another question, please? He's not aware of what work they are doing. He's not aware of the work they are doing. No, I, I didn't hear his answer. That's why I'm... Honorable, oh, no, can you ask another question? Otherwise, I'll move on. No, okay. Now, Honorable Katie Hammond, the perception is that the size of government is humongous. It's big. It's, it's so big. Given 
the, the country's financial situation now, do you not think that the president should be reducing the number of ministers that he has now? Is that what you, do you, do you not think? If, if you don't think so far, you can say it, but that's my question. Do you think that the size of government is big and therefore we should be reducing the number of ministerial appointments that we have? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's a point he makes. I think it would be a good idea um, that the president hears of this. And do you think, I'm supposed to ask, ask three questions. Third, yeah, this is my third question. The minority takes a position that the president ought not to have made additional appointments, but that he should have realigned and reassigned existing ministers to occupy uh, ministerial portfolios such as the one that you seek to occupy now. Do you have a view on our position? Uh, to start with, I don't know your position, and I'm not so sure I can have a view on it, because I don't know what your position is. I am called here um, to be vetted because uh, the president has uh, nominated me for a position as uh, uh, Minister for um, Trade and Industry. I'm not sure if in um, the discussions that has just gone on there, you suggest that this portfolio should have been uh, reconfigured or aligned with the, any other ministry. I, I'm not so sure that's the point you're making. Yeah, well, um, Thank you very much, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, Honorable Hammond. Honorable Hammond, um, my constituency houses the headquarters of second-hand electrical dealers. Uh, there have been issues about banning the importation of their wares into the country, and they've been having issues with the Standards Authority, which comes under your ministry and other agencies. They would want to hear from you how you would want to assist in solving some of these issues at the ministry. Thank you. Yes, um, Ms. John, it's, it's an important issue. It's a, it's a bread and life issue. But again, it's also a national developmental issue. Uh, so much dumping of, uh, of goods of uh, whatever description. Um, uh, in the country, um, it's a difficult one. Let 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 a collective um, decision of cabinet um, be be brought to bear on on, the, on this very sore subject. You see, on the one hand, you want to do away with all these matters, um, all these uh, products, electrical. Well, some of them environmentally are not friendly. So, but then, on the other hand. Uh, People need to live. They need to trade. Um, what do we do? Let the collective cabinet decide on this matter. And as I said, I've seen that it's also on the list um, that uh, uh, government uh, has decided that clear decisions to be made on. Thank you. Honorable, um, on the issue of after. Uh, Ghana hosts the headquarters of AFTA here, and I'm sure you've been following what the president has been talking about and its importance to our economy. How are you going to assist our business community to take full advantage of the AFTA program? Thank you. Well, it's interesting. That's, uh, it uh, dovetails into what uh, the Honorable Neil Ante um, was actually discussing. Um, if we could harness uh, the full potential of ECOWAS, and now coupled with that, the full potential of uh, uh, the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement, I, I think it, it should go uh, um, to a very considerable extent uh, to um, help our, um, our advancement, our industrialization, our trade, and uh, um, uh, economic well-being generally. There, there are quite a few policies uh, that uh, I, I have seen uh, which have been uh, put uh, in place. Number one, we should go through the proper protocols, um, establish the proper procedures, the trading arrangement. It's, uh, it's Africa, but of course it's also among countries. We should 
first establish areas of uh, of trade which will ensure competition um, we must also make sure that um, our uh, businesses are properly placed um, to be able to uh, engage in this uh, competition that I've talked about um, there have been things about um, uh, incentives in the shape of, uh, of uh, tax tax incentives um, government is also um, prepared to um, uh, grant other financial uh, incentives um, to to our nationals, our enterprises, the medium, the small, um, even the micro ones, uh, enterprises, um, to be properly placed. I'm aware that uh, we are the headquarters of uh, the, the the organization, um, where that uh, uh, we 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 have uh, established uh, the secretariat. Um, I guess we have been placed at a considerable advantage uh, to make sure that uh, we take a, uh, take a proper advantage of this. Um, we should look at uh, which particular types of uh, products um, uh, we are best uh, placed uh, at producing. We're talking about economies of scale. We should uh, take uh, advantage of this situation to ensure that um, uh, we develop our economy. Uh, um, honorable, um you believe in the UP tradition and the policies of the MPP. We are noted for creating giants in business. And um, the country will want to hear from you how you are going to deliberately assist Ghanaians to take advantage of certain aspects of our economy. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, 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 what the cabinet is, is uh, put in place uh, uh, gives me comfort that uh, we should be able to um, to cement uh, some of uh, the obstacles that uh, you, you, you discuss. I have come to um, see that um, the Ministry of Trade has put uh, uh, together what they call a 10-point uh, uh, industrial um, uh, development uh, um, um, uh, plan um, to revamp the economy. I, I, I used to say that the Ministry of uh, Energy is the, is, the, is the heart, is the heartbeat of, uh, of every economy because energy is power. It, it, it helps to, it's not that it helps, it's a sine qua non. I've also come to realize that uh, maybe trade and industry is also the fulcrum on, on, on which uh, the, the industrial development of the country uh, really revolves. We talk about development, we heard about uh, Africa, Ghana, uh, beyond aid and all that. That all cannot take place without proper uh, development of our, our economy and specifically to the areas you are talking about. The ministry has put together what they call a stimulus package and they, that really has to do with the uh, revitalization of our the existing uh, uh, companies which have collapsed um, when we were young you know about all the companies that we had in Ghana uh, before collapse the the government uh, through the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry um, seems to be quite clear about what has to be done um, they also uh, decided to look at the 1D, 1F thing is, of course, a flagship um, uh, issue. I wasn't going to discuss that. But specifically to also look at uh, what they call um, uh, strategic, some strategic industries. And those are the ones they're talking about. Look at proper big giant industries. Uh, we're looking at pharmaceuticals. You're looking at uh, the automobile industries. It's quite a few. Um, it's under control. I've, I, I've seen the document, I've seen the discussion, I've seen some notes. I think if we're able to actualize uh, uh, the framework that has been put in place, well, we should be, we should be making some headway. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Pakuru. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Nominee. Good morning, Honorable Nominee. 
Hello, good morning. I would uh, uh, want to take you to your CV, page one of your CV. It's paragraph four. With educational background, and I can see Adansi Asokwa Local Authority LA Primary School, Yeji Local Authority LA One Continuation School, but I can't see the duration which years you entered or left these uh, um, institutions. Maybe you can furnish the committee with this detail so that the CV can be adequately updated. You can't you can, you can quite recall all of this. You know, some in the 60s, some in the 70s, uh, pretty, pretty old stuff, you know, pretty old stuff. So. You were born in only 1960. That's not too long ago. <laughs> anyway, now um, my my first question, uh, Mr. Nomni, is that this country, Ghana, since independence, all of us, many governments have come and gone, and um, all of us have sung the same song from the same hymn about industrializing the economy of this country. Every single government have sung this hymn. But this is 2023, and we are still sitting here talking about industrialization. The data as of 2021 indicates that 30% of our GDP goes into imports. And the uh, government has this uh, flagship program which was launched amidst a lot of fanfare, one district, one factory. What would you say the one district, one factory policy or program has contributed towards this long-term agenda of industrializing this country in order that we can be self-sufficient and also make savings and run a prudent and fiscal fiscally sensitive economy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, as you, you rightly indicate, um, well, that's why we are where we are. Um, we were born in the 60s, uh, but we knew the, the industrial condition of the country. Along the line, everything was collapsed. Um, but the MPP uh, government, and particularly uh, current administration, is taking uh, uh, considerable strides, making a lot of effort uh, the direction that you indicated. And you draw attention to the 1D, 1FR program. It is fantastic. It's fundamental. It's, it's, it's good. Um, the policy is to ensure that every single district has got a factory, and that is towards industrialization. Uh, as I understand it, um, uh, there are about, what, two, 200 and, uh, about 260 of such industries which so far um, are at various uh, stages of, uh, uh, of our completion. I think over 100 or so are already operational, um, uh, about uh, 150 uh, at um, advanced stage of uh, completion. You ask how is that, uh, what is the government intending to do, or how does that uh, feed into the point that you make? Yes, government is making conscious effort through this flagship project that every district takes advantage of the economies of scale with, with things that it's uh, materials and resources that they particular district is capable of producing and effectively harnessing into the industrial development. Number one of its particular, um, this particular district, and of course into uh, the, the general national uh, feed. Um, it establishes industries. If it establishes industries, it has this boomerang effect. You talked about uh, the monetary aspects of it, uh, how does it feed into our national budgetary uh, system? Well, if we have uh, the industries and uh, they take care of uh, the import substitution issues that I've just identified, that caters for uh, at least 
uh, part of uh, the, the, the foreign exchange issues that we're talking about. But is it, 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 it's got many ramifications. These industries at the urban and the peri-urban stages would also look after the question of uh, rural urban uh, migration. Uh, we've been complaining, our Christ uh, chock a block uh, with people seeking um, uh, employment, which don't necessarily exist uh, here, but they are now being uh, um, uh, restrained or constrained to their respective industry, uh, districts and regions because of these uh, projects that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Let's think about the youth. I understand from this project that some youth institutions were actually conglomerated and uh, put in place industries which government has taken uh, serious interest in and has advanced them with all the facilities uh, government is able to ensure um, uh, that uh, uh, they, they, they are successful. So um, I have also indicated to you a bit about the, the stimulus industries, uh, the stimulus package, and then ability, decision of government to also make sure that uh, the automobile industry it's it's also it's also developed the the conscious decision to invite some giant international companies to settle uh, to set up uh, assembly plants um, in the country. Um, the points that um, were previously raised and articulated, the textile industries, and of course the other ones that you haven't mentioned, the Commander Sugar, the starch factories and all those things, that's really all part of uh, uh, the single agenda to make sure that at least, um, yes, uh, some, uh, some measure of success would be attained or geared towards achieving what the uh, President uh, has consistently been talking about, uh, Ghana Beyond Aid. Ghana Beyond Aid essentially is making sure that some kind of industrial revolution takes place in Ghana. Mr. Chairman, I have a follow-up on that, Chair, would you leave? 